Hello. There we go, we're back, we're back, we're back. So yeah, Nick Patel, I'm James Harpin, we're representing the Sports Association. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone on the Sports Association. I know we're, um, I hope, hopefully actually we're doing a good job in representing all of you and getting all your needs um, put forward and hopefully we're doing a good job. I'm going to turn a couple out to you. Mark Green over here. Mark, come in. There's Mark, Carla. We've got Mike and Keith Go, who is Abbott. And then our chairman, Mark Whiteleg, can't be here today. <laughs> no, Mark Whiteleg can't be here today, but he's, um, yeah, he's, he's done a great job informing this, and hopefully we're doing a good job representing you guys. We've um, obviously set up the coaches this season for the Accrington game, and then the game last week at Gateshead. A lot of it is self funded, to be honest. There's, a couple of us are putting quite a bit of money and hopefully it's, it's paying off and we're doing a good job in representing you. Um, what else do you, want to, do you want to thank? Yeah, we want to thank Village for organising the trophies. He's done a great job. I mean, he saw the trophies last year as well. There's a couple of additional trophies as well that me, Nick and Mark Green have also contributed towards. So. It should be a good award ceremony. I um, also want to thank the chairman as well, Tony Clampus. He's done a great job in um, financially contributing towards some of the coaches that we've held this season. We put forward a thousand pounds that contributed towards, yeah, towards those two games, which unfortunately we did lose, but just nothing. Yeah. yeah. We'd also like to thank Dom as well, Dom Russell. He's done a great job with being our liaison. And he's, been, he's over there somewhere. Not Dom Revan, Dom Russell. <laughs> He's had a great job being our liaison. We've done uh, some good things with him this meeting this, this season. Had some good productive meetings. There's one to one that we're going to be releasing minutes for in the next couple of weeks as well. So hopefully you'll you'll find out some more information. Uh, I'm going to pass over to Nick now, who's going to introduce the main man. Hello, guys. Um, so I just want to start off by saying, look, um, being on the committee and where we've been in the last two years, there's been a lot of fundamental changes and a lot of improvements. So once again. I think the committee really deserves another round of applause for where we've got to. Um, and then look, I'm, I'm about to introduce Dean, obviously our manager, but I just want to state some facts here though. Two years ago, we finished second from bottom in the National League. Fair enough, it was COVID or whatever else like that. Last year, we finished 18. So I think wherever we finish this year, we've still got another five games, six games to go. Playoffs, no playoffs, trophy, no trophy. I think where Dean and his management team have dragged us to, I think really, honestly, if we look in reality, we would have all bitten, up, bitten his hand off six, eight months ago. So I think I'll introduce Dean now, but everyone needs to give him a round of applause. <laughs> Just to let our sponsor as well, by the way. <laughs> um, look, we've got a couple of questions, and then Dean, Dean's going to take over the mic and just have a few words with you guys. But there's a few questions that us, the committee, and the supporters have sent in that we want to go through with him. So one of the first things I want to ask you, Dean, is... Um, yeah, The first question I want to ask you, this is from the sports, we've only got three or four questions for you, is in the last 12 months, how far do you think we've come as a club as a whole? I think as a team we've come a long, long way. When I first came into the football club, it was you know, dead on its feet really. And what I tried to do was just bring it a bit of character, a little bit of togetherness. Because I'm a big believer, without togetherness you cannot achieve anything in life. And um, our supporters have bought into it, first and foremost, our chairman bought into it, which was so important. Because it has to come from the top and then it filters to me and then it was sort of my plan to create a togetherness with everybody. And we wanted to be inclusive of our supporters and I think that's very important. And when you see players giving their all, that's all you ask of any manager. And I think our players have continued to do that. Last year was very frustrating. We had a great player and everyone knows my favourite son of Efron. And I think the club really let him down over previous years because he was such a talented player. He's a player that's going to play in the Premier League and I always said that. And to be fair to the lads last year, the group we had last year, what they did really well, with, with sort of 12 games to go, we were out of relegation. 
and we started laying the foundations for this group of players. So some of the lads took longer to get in than we would have liked, but we've laid the foundations. And at the start of the season, people don't know, to keep going on about the points target we set, that was 80 points. Um, and I have a big saying, and I think it's so true, if you reach for the moon, you just want to get the stars. So we've got 12 to go uh, out of 15, um, massive five games coming up. And whatever you guys and your full support, positive support, that, that as well helps because you see the honesty of the players. Um, we won't achieve anything. So uh, I want to thank you guys for your full and positive support. It's been amazing. Thank you. And one more question for you. So, uh, an important question, not the best one, but what was the most important moment this season for where we got to? The first day of pre season. When I see every player going to the line, the lads will tell you that pre seasons are so hard. Um, and I kept saying to them, I walked to a guy called Daley Thompson, I don't know some of the younger lads might have known when I played at Luton. We used to do travel sessions, and he used to always say, when you're playing Hull away on a Tuesday night, you'll see. And we managed to get promoted that year with Luton, and he was right, and I've kept that philosophy with me ever since. And then the lads were running and going to the line, every player went to the line, and everyone. There was no cheating, anyone that did was gone. And that started on the fourth day, and they've continued to do that today. Putting our bodies on the line, Wins made a great block at the end. Um, Lottie's had to make a save. So that's what it takes to gain success in this business. So that's when I knew we had a decent team. Yeah, I think I've got a couple as well here, actually. Um, what's been the most challenging part of the season, would you say? And how have you learned from it? The weekend. Um, I think actually we were stupid that we're two games in in 48 hours. And it caused a lot of carnage after the week we had. Um, and now we've got injuries off the back of it. Maybe I should have been stronger and, and made that not happen. But I think that was really naive of us. Um, we should have got that game where I played on Tuesday against York. I played at the last Tuesday of the, of the season. It's been so frustrating. Um, and the lads have had to pick up, myself and the staff, have had to pick the, the group off the, off the floor, really. You know, you see tears last week like Gateshead from, from some players. So, um, But we've got another opportunity. Um, and the door is still open for us. We've got to make sure we walk through it. 100%. 100%. Right, one more. Can you give us a bit of insight into how preparation is going for next season? Yeah, they've started already. Um, they started about two and a half months ago or so. Um, so, yeah, look, we don't have to bring in as many players in the summer. Um, the target's probably six players, half a dozen of players. So, if we manage to get promoted, we'll have to bring in more. Um, but, yeah, so we've two plans for next season. That's so important. Uh, but he got to take it one game at a time because a week's a long time in this business, as we've all seen. So, um, so yeah, but I always just try to look six months ahead. Agreed, completely agreed, completely agreed. Is there anything else you wanted to say, or should we move on to the awards? No, I'll just say something just briefly. I want to thank the, the, the guys in the committee, they've been unbelievable, the support association, they've been unbelievable. I want to thank, obviously, Tony and his family. You know, you won't see the heartbreak they go through. And he is challenging, trust me. <laughs> I have many a Tuesday night on the phones one telling me this and telling me that. But look, he's a good guy. And the one thing about Tony and his family, they absolutely love this football club. This is their football club. And you guys are part of that. And my job is to bring everyone together. And I think, well, I think we've done that. But the main thing now, we've got to sustain that. We've got to kick on. You drove us forward today. You drove us forward last week when we come back from 3-0 down. So continue to keep pushing us forward. And, uh, I think it's an exciting three weeks coming up. You know, another massive game on Monday. We can't rest on the laurels, and uh, they're a tough side, mate. Down, so they won't be easy. Last time we played them in the trophy, they gave us a lot of, a lot of problems with the pace. But keep getting behind us, and uh, let's make sure we minimum get in the playoffs. Well, I'm going. So we're going to go straight into the awards now and we're going to start off with the most improved player of the year. Now I think we had a lot of turnover over the start, at the start of the season and obviously Dean said a lot of players come in. So there's not actually that many players here that were here last season. But I'm going to announce the winner of the most improved player of the year, just so you can see him. It is Ryan de Havilland. Ryan. So you know you've got to get to go about Ryan. Yeah. 
Thank you. No, 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 we went straight, straight for the first one. Mm. How have you enjoyed your time at Barnet and how does it feel to win this trophy? It's been very good, you know. Last year wasn't great, like I said. But this year we bounced back, got some new players in. I think the team's been great, really. It's helped me, helped me to improve, so I can't, I can't fault anyone. Would you agree that you've improved a lot this season as well? 100%, 100%. I mean, Players like Hawley, Smudge, like they're taking kind of a backseat on the pitch, but off the pitch they've, they've helped me so much. Good, good. Do you know anything to say about Ryan as well? I think Ryan's got the ball about his feet. Um, he's two footed, he's brave, he always wants the ball. I thought he was outstanding today. Um, he's ch chipped in with goals and um, he's all great and playful and he's represented his family really well and uh, he's been brilliant for us. <laughs> <laughs> So the next award is, um, for me, it's one of the most important awards that we can give as a club. And I think as Dean reiterated earlier about this guy came in to replace, you know, one of our star players, Efron Mason Clark. And I think he's been unbelievable. He's always, play, always plays with a smile on his face, always engages with the fans as well, which I, I really, really love. But um, the young player of the year for Barnet FC is Idris Kanu. Gaffer. Yeah, it's another player where when we spoke originally, we spoke to Cookies, his agent, by the way. You all love Cookie. Um, he cooks his agent. So when we spoke originally around the table, we spoke about getting his numbers right and uh, him scoring more goals, getting on the back post more. It's something we walked away as well. So I think it's is the same, you know, keep scoring, creating goals, and that's what gets people's attention from home. That's what changes games. And I thought he's very influential in our performance again today. So. He's, he's doing a great job in the team, but I think there's much more to come from this kid. Next one is goal of the season. So I think there's been quite a lot of screamers this season. A couple come to mind. Idris away at Wrexham. That was about 40 yards out. Idris at Oldham as well, where he's run through their old team. Nicky against Chesterfield, Nicky away at Yeovil. But the winner is Ryan de Havilland at home to Boroughwood. That last minute screamer. Incredible goal, that. Won't make you speak again if you've already what you to say. Well, Ryan. <laughs> Next one's an important one. It's going to be Dean's manager's player of the year. So I'm going to hand over to Dean to present this. When you bring in, um, when you bring in senior players and players that sort of lead a group, it's so important. You've got that seniority. So Kim, I was one of them. Richard's one of them. Smudge was one of them, so Winter, Gorman. We sort of we set up a committee, um, so we've got like a three-man executive committee within the changing room, then we've got a five-man, and they control the changing room. But when it comes to forced in, last to leave, leading by example, scoring big goals at big times, covering the ground of three men at times, um, I have to be honest with you, and he sort of fell on our lap, to be totally honest with you, in the, in, in, in in the off-season. He found himself out of contract, and I couldn't believe it, to be honest with you. 
Um, and I think he's been a major signing for us, and I think he's done unbelievable for us. And uh, the there's the staff here. There. Um, and for me, he's been the manager's player of the year, and it's um, Harry Pochetta. Correct. First season of Barnard with the 15 goals. 15 goals. Um, what's been your favourite moment? What's been your favourite goal? How's the year been? Um, well, it's tough to pick. There's, there's a good few moments there, but um, now nah, all in all, it's been a it's been a good personal uh, season for me, and obviously, obviously for the team as well, uh, being as high up the league as we are. Um, I know it's I know it's um, down to my goals and, and whatnot that I do, but it's helping the team and the manager picking me every week. Um, so I can't thank them enough for that. Perfect, Dean. Anything else to say about Pritch? Just the same again. Uh, is it 128, lads? 127. That's a little in house joke. <laughs> <laughs> what are we supposed to laugh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good. Well done, Pritch. Well done, man. Uh, the next one, probably one of the most prestigious ones, to be honest, it's going to be players play after so you obviously want to be, in a, in a squad like this, I think we're a tight, tight squad, I think everyone gets along, so I'm going to announce the players player now, Ooh. it's Harry Pritchard again. <laughs> How does it feel to be appreciated by, by a squad? Yeah, uh, like I said in my, in my previous uh, statement there, it's, it's a lot of hard work from everyone here, um, and it's nice to be recognised uh, by the players. Yeah, no, I completely agree, I completely agree. It's probably the most important award that you could possibly have, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I'll, um, I'll have to buy my drink for both. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well done, mate. Guys, on to, in my opinion, the most um, most special and most sentimental award, the Leicester Finch Award. So last year, there's a guy that I got to know this year was Sean Cherrick from the Walking Football um, team. And uh, this year, there was a few nominations, um, but there's one person in particular. Like, listen, we all value ourselves to be selfless and do everything we can, whether we're on the committee or whatnot. But this guy has gone out of his way, so he's contributed towards the Italian making coach trips out of his own pocket, out of his family's pocket. He's gone out of his way on an away day to go and pay for a drink for all the away fans in the pub. Um, li literally, this guy is the most selfless guy ever. I've, I've asked him to get involved in some uh, junior cricket stuff, which is nothing to do with Barney Foot Club, which is agreed to because of our, our friendship, our relationship. And I think this guy fully, fully deserves this award. And I know he means a lot to Dean and the management team. But the Leicester Finch Award for this year is Mr. Kirk Kramer. Before we come back on stage, I just want to mention one other thing as well. So not only did the committee unanimously vote for him, but also the chairman of our football club said he was the only he was the main candidate for this vote. So I think that deserves an even louder round of applause. <laughs> I don't even want to shout friends, but how you found your first season? Second, second. Um, unbelievable, to be honest. Really enjoyed it. I think we've done a good job of recruiting. A good squad, a very good squad. And that makes the job easier. Like Dean said earlier, it can be challenging at times, ups and downs, but <coughs> Gaffer's done unbelievable. And 
prove of being a billion in three weeks' time. The biggest question is, what is it about us fans that you just like? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, just, sorry. <laughs> Listen, I'll pass over to Dean. Nah, Cork, Cork's the kind of chap that does everything sort of behind the scenes, and uh, he's someone that brings everyone together as well, which is so important. He's so approachable. He'll sort things out for the lads with their personal lives, like. Lads, are, some of the lads are in digs, he sorted that out, so he has to run around for Tony as well, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> Keeps him away from me. So yeah, so I need part of recruitment, goalkeeping, help Laurie, obviously when Mel left us and moved on to Hampton, he steps into that position, so he fully deserves the award and uh, he's doing a great job. Long may I continue. Okay, to promote the award, and uh, this is one that is a new award this year that the committee have um, sponsored and put on the table. And for me, this is a special one because I've like, been part of past with a lot of cricket clubs, football clubs, rugby clubs, and this award always means something um, because it's voted for by the fans, it's voted for by players. Um, and this guy, I just want to say a few things about him. So he's 34 years old, he hasn't played uh, full time football in six seasons. And he came in as a player coach and he played every minute of every game. And I think the guy's fantastic. And, yes. and everyone calls him Skip because he's a pro, he's a leader. And the club of the year for Barney FC, sponsored by the committee, is Jerome Akimo. <laughs> A little bit of fun anyway, other than you coming from Wilson, which makes me super happy. <laughs> well, all, jokes, all jokes aside, like, listen, I mean, it's incredible what you've done this year. Uh, you know, I challenge everyone where I sit in my season ticket watch how many jewels a chemo lose in the air, and no one can tell me that you lose your jewels. I mean, it's pretty unbelievable. But how have you found your first year? Eh? It's been a good season, great first year. <clears throat> Credit to the gaffer, all the boys, get together, great group, couldn't ask for more. Hopefully we finish off the season on a, on a high. Five years left, yeah. Five years. Five years. Five years. I, just, I inherited Skip when I was manager at that other place. I won't mention the name. But, um, yeah, well, and to be fair, an absolute warrior, leader. Played every minute of every game, don't right, Skip? Yeah. And he's a manager on the pitch, within the changing room. Just takes the team forward all the time. Always positive. And Smudger's hammering people, which he does do Connor Smith. Skip's got to pick them up, so... <laughs> Basically, they like Miami voice these two. Um, so yeah, so look, he's an absolute warrior lead on. Listen, if you want to go into the trenches with anybody, this fella will come with you all day long. Alright? Well done, Skip. Well done. And the last one, which is both of everyone, is the supporters player of the season. So we put out a poll for everyone to take part in. I mean, it was actually pretty close in the end. Uh, There's quite a few nominees, and it's probably the first time in a while that we've had quite a few people to pick from for this award. Not going to do a third place, second place. We're going straight to it. Your supporters player of the season, in goal, Laurie Walker. Doing your job, yeah? Basically, this is what I'm doing. But no, you guys, every week, priceless, you know, and I think for me, this isn't just me, it's about all of these boys as well, you know, because I can't do my job on my own. I've got back three in front of me constantly, midfield, strikers, you know, always working for each other. So I think this collectively is, you know, should be a player's award. Um, because all season, these guys have been fantastic as well. Um, I've done my bit, obviously, but these guys. 
massive as well. But obviously, we all appreciate you guys, and you turn them out every week and get it set away. Obviously, that's massive. Um, so fair play to all of you guys for constantly sticking with us on your that's real. But the gaffer says we need you for the remaining five or six days. Um, in fine voice, just pushing us over the line because we'll get there. I don't know if this helps, but Laurie's missus, can you come up? Come on up. Come on, Sam. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Come on. She actually came. What's he like at home? What's he like at home? Two proper love boards here, by the way. I want to congratulate them on their relationship. And that's one. Hey, well, yeah, well, yeah. Hey. Hey, okay, well, the point is, play the season. Well done. Well done. Guys, so just to find the words, just to find the words on behalf of like, um, the essay and the committee. Listen, there's, I think there's six or seven of us that are trudging along and we're all the only aim we have is to drive this club forward and to make a difference. And I hope that's how you guys see us. And listen, the turnout this year compared to last year is pretty unbelievable. So I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you for making the effort to be here tonight on behalf of all of us. Mark, Keith, Mike, Carla, Mark, James and myself. Thank you so much for being here and showing us support and just continue to back the lads. Um, yeah, thank you. So I'll let Dean say the final words and I'll shut up now. Oh, sorry, the raffle. Uh, raffle, Carl will the raffle. Does anyone want to buy a raffle? It's going to be re revealed straight after Dean's final comments. Anyone want to buy a raffle? No? Okay. Right. Dean's going to say the final words and then the raffle prize will be drawn. Uh, the, if you want to interact with the players and that, they're going to stay around for half an hour or so and, and have a little drink because we're in training tomorrow so they can't go crazy um, all in all weekend. But they're the sacrifices we make. Um, just keep getting behind us. We'll keep going to the line and hopefully a little bit of lady luck that goes our way, especially uh, over the next five games. All right, thanks for your support and uh, hope you enjoy the evening. Thank you. Carl is going to draw this for, uh, for next uh, season ticket for the 23 24 season. That's prize number one. Sorry, this, I'm getting the wrong information here. Hold on. Oh, let me just go back to this. This is for the sign short. Shit. Shit. One, seven, four. One, seven, four. Good luck. Hold on. Who's your favourite player? Uh, Harry Crichton. <laughs> okay, this is for the uh, next season free season ticket. This is sponsored by the committee. Number 68. You have to, you know what? I like Ryan to have you. Congratulations. Alright, that concludes the uh, Player of the Year Awards. That's being said, players will be sticking around, interact, they're all nice guys. They won't, they won't, they won't be scared of you. Cheers, dude.